Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm Palash Agarwal from Yahoo Sports Verizon Media, and I'm going to talk about how we adopted Spinnaker Kayata to perform automated canary analysis at Yahoo. This is me. I'm a principal software engineer at Yahoo Sports, which is now a brand under Verizon Media. I lead the infrastructure team at Sports. I've been at Yahoo for about eight and a half years. I've worked on all things backend in all these years, data processing, storage, APIs, real-time event processing systems. And now I'm focusing on making all of it better by working on our underlying infrastructure. Some of the work that the team accomplished includes migrating classic applications from physical machines to Kubernetes, thus saving around $1 million in operating costs annually. We also made our CI CD pipeline manifold faster, going from one releases a week to multiple times a day. We built a performance testing tool that integrates with our CI CD solution. We are working on open sourcing it. Hopefully, we'll have it ready to share with the community soon. If that sounds interesting, we are hiring. Please do reach out to me on LinkedIn. I did my master's in computer science from UCLA in 2012. Go Bruins. I'm a huge Chelsea fan, and I'm very optimistic about the team under Frank Lampard. Needless to say, I love soccer. And being Indian, I obviously love cricket. I like to think that I'm pretty good at FIFA. So if you play on Xbox, hit me up after this presentation for sure. Many of you would be wondering, hey, Palash, you work for Yahoo Sports. What is Verizon Media? Well, Verizon Media is home to media, tech, and communication products that more than a billion people love and trust. Some of the leading brands in its portfolio include AOL, HuffPost, TechCrunch, Yahoo Finance, Yahoo Mail, and of course, Yahoo Sports. So here's the agenda for today. We start by discussing a little bit about the CI/CD setup at Verizon Media and the state of the metric space promotion. We briefly introduce Kayanta and big items to consider before deciding to use it for canary analysis. Next, we talk about our Kayanta setup at Yahoo, what modifications were done, etc. And finally, we discuss our future plans. So let's get started by talking about CI/CD at Verizon Media. We use Screwdriver as our tool of choice for CI/CD. It's a homegrown solution which is now an open source project and is part of the CD foundation. Some of the salient features of Screwdriver include secure build and deploy of code. It integrates well with the developer's daily software development cycle, support for pull request builds and status checks, YAML based DSL to declare the pipeline as code. And finally, it can run anywhere, bring your own executor, service, and data store. So what is metric space promotion? As the name implies, it is promoting a new build to production if certain thresholds are met for a predefined set of metrics. At Verizon Media, we had an existing solution for that, but it had its share of problems. The configuration was often repeated, and you would end up with a huge pull request of JSON that most people would blindly approve. It only supported static thresholds. For example, fail the build if 5xx errors are more than 5%. This is a valid strategy, but often increases in 5xx will not caused only by the change in code. The same issues were being observed in the production deployment as well. It was not extensible. The tool only supported Splunk and the internal metric store. The biggest pain point, I believe, was tight dependency on the libraries. We had an issue where the library was not upgraded to support Node 12, and we had to turn off the analysis till the time the client library was upgraded. And even after the upgrade, there were compatibility issues. So we looked at automated canary analysis using Kayanta. As you would have guessed, Kayanta is a Spinnaker service that utilizes statistical methods like manually classification, interquartile range, etc., to analyze metrics fetched from various data sources for the canary and baseline deployments and provides a score for the canary deployment. Thresholds can be set to pass or fail the deployment based on the score. Kayanta fit our requirements. It was extensible. It compared two deployments receiving slice of production traffic and was loosely coupled to the actual deployment. If you've used Kayanta before, you must be familiar with this image. The traffic is split between three deployments, production, baseline, and canary. Production has the most servers and takes the majority of the traffic, while baseline and canary have small but same number of servers and take a small amount of traffic. Only canary deployment has the new version of the software. The metrics from all these deployments are stored in the metric store of application owner's choice. Canary analysis is then performed on these metrics. Here's the same thing in a table format. It is important to note that all three deployments are in your production environment, taking live production traffic. The downstream dependencies are the same as production. Only difference 
is the slice of traffic taken by the deployments and the fact that Canary has a new version of the code. For accurate Canary analysis, it is very important that baseline and Canary are exactly the same. Number of servers, traffic split, etc. The only difference is that the Canary has new code. So the example here, uh, assuming you send traffic 90% to production, baseline and Canary you send 5% each. So how does this look in a continuous delivery pipeline? Assuming the traffic is split 90% to production and 5% each to Canary and baseline, when a new change is merged, the new code is deployed only to Canary. Canary analysis performed next, and if the Canary analysis passes, baseline and production deployments get the new code. So let's talk about how that is achieved at Verizon Media. We introduced Screwdriver earlier in the presentation. A typical Screwdriver pipeline looks like the top image. A commit leads to a QA build and deployment, followed by the staging deployment. Assuming the functional and integration tests pass, we move on to Canary and production deployments in the respective data centers. In a new setup, we introduce a Screwdriver job that performs Canary analysis after the Canary deployment in the respective data centers. If the Canary analysis passes, the code is deployed to the baseline and production deployments in the respective data center. This is obviously a simplistic view. You need to make sure that you do not have a shear because Canary analysis passes in one data center and not the other. Don't want to end up with a different code in different data centers, production engineering 101. We recommend that the Canary analysis be performed for at least 60 minutes or to get enough data points from various metric stores. The statistical methods used are more accurate when there is more data and there could be false positives if the, anal if the analysis is run for lower duration. So let's look at the setup in more detail. Here's the money slide. This is how we have Canary set up. We have a Kubernetes deployment of the Canary service with Redis running in the container as LRU cache. Kyanta uses Redis to store intermediate results during an execution. You can run Redis as a sidecar too. The Canary configs and execution results are archived in an AWS S3 bucket. A Kubernetes deployment of Refri is also set up to provide a UI to analyze the Canary analysis results. On the left, we have all the Screwdriver jobs in order going top to bottom. First, we have the Canary deployment followed by the Canary analysis job. The Canary Analysis job orchestrates the creation of Canary config and execution of Canary Analysis with Kyanta. If the Canary Analysis job passes, the baseline and production deployments are proceeded. Metrics from the Canary baseline and production deployments are stored in various metric stores like Splunk, Prometheus, and an internal metric store. Kyanta fetches metrics from these stores and performs the Canary Analysis. To make that possible, we made some modifications to Kyanta. We wrote custom plugins to fetch metrics from Splunk and our internal metric store. We extended the HTTP client to work with OAuth tokens. We also extended it to work with services that require MTLS authentication. Currently, Kyanta performs Canary analysis only over a single metrics account. We modified the code to allow for analysis by fetching metrics from multiple stores like Splunk, Prometheus, in the same Canary analysis execution. One of our biggest pain points from the existing metrics-based promotion solution at the company was repeated and huge configurations. To tackle that, we wrote a HCL-inspired domain-specific language for Kyanta. We are huge fans of Terraform here, and this was hugely inspired by it. HCL is HashiCorp configuration language. It is more human-readable compared to JSON and YAMLs. The Kyanta DSL generates the canary configurations and execution configurations required by Kyanta. Here is an example on the right. We allow the application owners to specify the application name, description, the duration for the analysis. We also allow them to set up a warm-up duration to let the caches warm up in the newly deployed canary. Application owners define reusable blocks as context, which provide a value for canary and the baseline deployments. So in the example on the right, we have a KS context for Kubernetes, where the user specifies the cluster, namespace, and the deployments for canary and baseline. We named this context production east. We wrote code to figure out the latest replica set deployed in Canary and baseline deployments. Similarly, you can have a constant context where the values for Canary and baseline can be explicitly set. Metric accounts can be specified for both Canary and baseline deployment. This is just for added flexibility. We named this account Prometheus account in our example. Finally, the magic happens in the metrics group section. You can provide a weight for the group and other configurations and you have multiple metric stores to fetch the data from. You can refer to the metric account specified earlier, Prometheus account in this case, and list the metrics you want to fetch 
from that account for both Canary and Baseline. As mentioned before, contexts are usable and you can refer to them and assign them to a variable that can be used in the query that is passed to Kayanta. So in this example, the KS context named Production East is assigned to controller. Now, dollar dollar controller can be used in the query and is passed to Kayanta, which evaluates it based on the other configuration values sent to it as part of the generated JSON. Pull requests for such a configuration are so much easier to review. We have also added validations for all the blocks and fields in DSL. So that runs as an additional check in our pull request builds. The next step was to make the setup Scrutter friendly. Scrutter provides a framework called templates that allow subject matter experts to share best practices for their platform. It abstracts the build container and the build steps and makes creating a job very easy for a developer. We created a Scrutter template for a canary analysis solution. Here is an example for what a sample entry in the Scrutter configuration would look like. The template has the following steps. The first step is to create Kayenta Canary and execution configurations using the supplied Kayenta DSL. Next, it executes the analysis on Kayenta. The build job is passed or failed based on the result from the Canary analysis. We also added a placeholder step that can be overridden to handle failures. Finally, Scrutter integrates with Slack, so the application owner gets notified in the Slack channel of choice of the result. Here is the sequence diagram showing how Scrutter interacts with Kayenta. It blocks the Canary deployment job so that we are not analyzing the result during a Canary deploy. It then creates the Canary configuration from the Canary DSL and uploads it to Kayanta. In the analysis step, it waits for the configured analysis time to complete before requesting Kayanta to perform analysis retroactively on the past number of minutes configured. Based on the result from Kayanta, the build is passed or failed. It can be difficult to interpret the results from the Canary analysis if there is no UI. Luckily for us, the good people at Nike open source a tool called Referee that allows us to perform standalone actions against the Kayanta service. It is a user interface to check the results of the Canary analysis and also run on-demand Canary analysis. We set up a Kubernetes deployment of Referee to allow users to visualize the results. In the Slack update sent by Screwdriver on job completion, we include a permalink to this Referee console where application owners can see the results for their execution. We have also made multiple enhancements to Referee to satisfy some of our use cases. We added a search to look up results by execution ID. This is very useful when trying to debug Canary analysis failures retroactively. We also added a list of all the Canary configs created on Kayanta to the homepage. Application owners can quickly click on the relevant config and load it in Referee to run on-demand Canary analysis. No need to look for the configuration or the configuration JSON. Finally, Referee only support default scope we added support for multiple scopes that allows us to query multiple metric sources in the same Canary analysis. So in a nutshell, these are the things that are required by a team at Verizon Media to start using Canary analysis. First, they need to set up their Canary baseline in production deployments and figure out the traffic routing. They can use a stupid virtual service, Apache traffic service, DNS routing, what have you. Next, they write the configuration in Kayanta DSL. They update their Scooter configuration to use their Canary analysis template that we wrote and point it to the Canary DSL. And finally, use Referee to analyze the results. So what is coming next in this space at Verizon Media? We launched a beta in Q4 2020 and are onboarding applications this quarter. We hope to share results and success stories with the community once we GA. We plan to add a static thresholds judge to our Canary analysis solution. That combined with comparing baseline and Canary can be a powerful mix. There have been requests to fail the Canary analysis early instead of waiting for an hour or more. If the Canary is clearly bad and we are able to identify that within the first few minutes. So we work on that next. We want to introduce another internal data source to pull in revenue and business metrics like DAU, CTRs, etc. Finally, we plan to contribute back all the modifications we have done for Kayanta and Referee. That was all I had. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this talk was useful. I'm available in the Spinnaker Slack and on LinkedIn if you have any questions. Have a great week ahead. Bye-bye.